We will begin the hot dogging snuggle sack in just a moment. Hi everyone, it's Mikey and I'm proud to introduce a brand new pattern series by Yarnspirations.com. It's called the Sleep and Snuggle Sack series. On screen now are other sleep sacks that are available in free pattern and tutorial format. Whimsical and delightful projects that will practically guarantee a warm smile from boys and girls. Super terrific for gift giving and much more. If you're wanting to try another sleep sack, then just click to play and I'll forward you directly to the next one. If you're wanting to do today's project, well, don't wait any further. Let's get started right now. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Let's begin today's tutorial on working on this fabulous hot dogging snuggle stack by Yarnspirations.com. Today's tutorial is a comprehensive start to finish project. In fact, I'm working on this project behind the scenes so I can film the complete steps to be able to show you what to do. If ever you wanted to crochet a hot dog, well today is your lucky day because today we're going to be making this fun snuggle sack that will definitely make you smile and is intended to be fun and quirky and it's definitely a conversational crochet project. For today's project there is a front and back to your hot dog. In fact you'll need to crochet two wieners and four buns to make this work. Strategically sewn to make it look like one piece. Of course the decorating of your hot dog is completely up to you and I'll show you some tips that I did because I did my toppings a little differently. This hot dog minus the filming and preparation time took me about 12 hours to make. The project can be done in just a couple days and that's of course you don't get distracted along the way. On screen is the anatomy of the hot dog and we'll return back to my workshop chalkboard in between each lesson. There are three steps involved in making this hot dog snuggle sack. Without further ado, let's examine the pattern and let's start from there. In today's pattern we're going to do the hot dog and crochet snuggle sack and here is a copy of the pattern. And what we need is that we need to create the buns and the wiener that it is inside. Now I want to talk to you about this because this is one of those ones I had to wrap my brain around whether the child was inside the wiener itself or were they part of the buns and how was it all working on on the inside. Let me go through that first and then I'll go through each of the buns and the wiener by itself. So here's a cutout of what you see the child using and the child is slipping into the front of this. Now a few things that you're going to notice right away. The wiener is actually hanging more out of the buns at the top than it is in the bottom. The bottom it's more flat just like so. So what was happening on the back of this? This is the question I had in my brain is that were the buns wrapping all the way around? Well no. If you look at the actual pattern you'll see that there's a second half. So what's happening here is that the front half has the mustard squirt on top. It doesn't matter which ones you really use it really. And the back half has the ketchup. So what you have to do is that you have to create four buns. So one, two, three and four and two wieners. One and two. And what's going to happen here is that as we get this done is that we are going to sew the bun to the wiener so it's overlapping like so. Then we're going to sew the other bun to the wiener just like this and then we're going to do the exact same on the other side. So sew this bun to the top of this wiener and this bun to the top of this wiener. Therefore you'll have two different panels and all you just need to do is pick them up and one will be the opposite side to what you have here. So here is the front of the of the snuggle sack and if you turn it over the back looks identical. So the buns are not wrapping all the way around this. In fact it's either you can wear it either way and if you want to add more toppings to your um, hot dog that's completely up to you. So what's happening is that once you put the two panels together you're going to sew from about this top corner all the way around and then catch it here. Change your color of the sewing right at the bottom so that the two wieners have the same string that so it matches the wiener. Change it then again and so then the, sew the bun up here up until this top corner. So when the child is using this they're actually using all of this in behind and not just in in behind just one of the items. So this all becomes like a really kind of a big bag at the end regardless of its front or back. So this is kind of how to look at it. So what is going on with the wiener and the buns? They're slightly different but very close to each other. So you may have noticed that there's an odd shape going on in the bun versus the wiener. The wiener really is essentially when you really truly looked at it uh, from this perspective you can see the wiener just does this. Okay so it's just a complete revolution like so. The bun is slightly different. The bun starts off like that for most of it like this but then the final two rounds what happens is is that you're going to grow only on the one side 
which is gonna make it pop out and then go back in the other direction. So what's gonna happen here is that the buns, very similar to the wiener, but has growth on one side. And when you really look at it from this perspective, do you see it? Here is the center line of the bun. Look at the difference between this here and that there. You can see it extends out more. So the side that is extending more is the outside of the bun, which gives the illusion of the shaping of a bun for a hot dog. So of all the snuggle sacks, this is the easiest one in my opinion to do. Um, I'm gonna teach you a way today so that you can watch television and get this done at the same time without having to count all the stitches in between. I'm gonna show you some techniques on turning around on the edge here, whether it's the wiener or the bun, it's both the same concept. The wiener is slightly bigger than the buns, yeah, not only in the length but also in the thickness, just like this. And um, what we're going to be doing is that I'm gonna be teaching you how to address turning the corner without having to count all these stitches all the way down because you wanna watch television. You don't wanna be sitting there counting the whole time. So I'm gonna be teaching you some techniques in order to do it and you'll need some stitch markers for that to happen. So without further ado, let's start and we're gonna do the wiener first in chapter number one. Okay, so now that we know what to do, let's start by crocheting our wieners first. There are two and let's do one together and then you can go back and do the other one on your own. So let's begin chapter number one. We're gonna do the wiener. So the wiener is individual and you need to make two of these. So what you're seeing here is the one side of it and then you'll make a second one then for the other side of your snuggle sack like I've already explained. Let's uh, go through some tips. I'm gonna bring a diagram that I made myself just to show you what to do when it comes around these corners. After we get our first chain done, we're going to be going back and around and around and around. And what I want to show you here is that if you play with stitch markers when I go to demonstrate this in a few moments, is that if you play with stitch markers, you're going to be able to nail these really good in order without you having to significantly count as you make your way down the flat areas all the way to the other side. So when you go to start, what's gonna happen is that the starting here is actually partially way through the turn just like so. So when we go around and we're gonna get the first one done, go all the way and when we come back around we're gonna do the final four half double crochets in before joining. So then we chain up two. These chaining of two that you see here, that doesn't count as anything. They're more of just a placeholder and when you do that they don't really count. They're more of a builder and you'll have a really nice finish if you consider it like that as well. So what you're going to notice is that you have to watch the start. So when we come all the way around for example, uh, we did two double crochets into e or two half double crochets into each. The next row we do uh, two into one and then one into one, two into one, one into one and you continue that same pattern until you get to the slip stitch like so. But you'll notice on the other side when we go to start we're going to start with one half double crochet then two and then this one is two half double crochets then two and then this one is three. So this is where it kind of loses its um, um, uh, what was that? What's that called? Like balance. Because normally I would have considered that the first two would have been like this in order to have these two double crochets into the same one, but it's not. It still works out, still looks great, but this is what you have to watch for at the end. So this is what's happening on the side that has the slip stitch. What is happening on the other side? It's even easier. So on the opposite side of the wiener or even the bun, doesn't matter which one you're working with, it's still the same concept, is that you're gonna have your five half double crochets right in the edge just like so on the last chain before you, you come around. So the next one then is two into one. So what we have to do is that we have to place our stitch markers. So let's, we're coming from here, we're going up and then we turn. If we place stitch markers right in this section here, you don't have to count all of the stitches in order to get to this point. You just look for the stitch marker because they're building up on top of each other just like you see. So the only difference between this row and this row is that there's more half double crochets that separate it from where it branches off just like you see. So in this side there's consistency. Two halves, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. The next time you come around here is that you're going to see it here and you're gonna see two, 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 two. And as you build out it gets more. So on the buns in the wiener, Okay, there is a slight difference because the wiener is bigger. And so in the buns, the eventually the last time you will go around is that you'll have four half double crochets in a row. Okay, so you only see three here. You'll have four in a row and then two. Just like that. So you'll start off here, two, and then there will be four, two, four, two. On the wiener, because it's slightly bigger by one revolution, is that there's gonna be five half double crochets and then two. So you'll start off with five, 
or sorry, two half doubles, five, two half doubles, five. And so if you can remember that, it makes it so much easier and it's a great way to count. So the trick is, is to make sure you use your stitch markers, whether it's the bun or the wiener, and therefore you can enjoy this process without having to count obsessively as you grow it through this project. So before you begin, please get three stitch markers. They can be leftover yarn of any color, as long as you can tell what color it is. And you'll need a total of three of these, and these are gonna act as your stitch markers. These are what's gonna allow you to be able to enjoy television at the same time when making this project. So let's begin to do the wiener, and we need to do an eight millimeter size L crochet hook, or look at the gauge of the pattern and determine that. We're using pumpkin spice as our Bernat blanket today to be the color of the wiener in this case. Of course, if you want a different color, that's completely up to you. So let's start off with the slip knot. Remember, it never counts as one. So we're going to chain a total of 80, so just chain. So one, two, three, four, and five. Go all the way to 80, meet me back here in just a moment. So I now have my 80 on the hook. So what I want to do is count third chain back from the hook. So just look underneath. So one, two, and three. Turn it over and get the back loop only. And I want you to half double crochet into the back loop of the chain. Once you do the first back loop, the rest of the, the chain will stay turned upside down. And moving down the back loops of the entire chain, I want you to half double crochet up until you get to the other side where I'm gonna show you how to do the first turn around because what's gonna happen is that we're gonna go along this chain, turn around on the same chain and then come up through the bottom on the bottom side to create a whole revolution. So continue just to half double crochet yourself down the chain. I'll see you at the end of this chain. Okay, so now I'm all the way down the chain except for the very last one. So the very last one we wanna put in five half double crochets in there. So let's start the count. So one, two, and you're gonna see the project's gonna naturally rotate because there's too many stitches going into it. So this is three, four, and five. So that's all right in the very end. So now that your five are in, I want you to go back to the very first one. So one, two, three, four, five. Go back to the first one and right where that first one is of the group of five, you want you to stick in your hook and put a stitch marker in there. This will indicate next time you come here, this is where it's going to start for putting in two double crochets into the same stitch for when we come back on this row. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna continue to rotate the project, okay, and starting right in the next stitch that's available to you, okay. So don't get confused by all of this extra yarn. It's right here, okay, do you see that? So all this is one, so it's the first one here. And what I want you to do is grab that straggler that you started with and just put that as part of it just to trap it into position and underneath the stitches. So I want you to half double crochet yourself all the way back to the other side and I want you to stop the one that's prior to hitting the very end. So just half double crochet yourself across. Once you uh, get this, uh, this straggler in uh, long enough then you can just let it go and just trim out the rest. So I would probably let it go at this point. It's in enough and just continue to half double crochet yourself all the way and I'll see you at the last stitch before you turn the corner. So as you come all the way back across, you're going to run into what appears to be uh, two stitches left and there's only, appears to be only one stitch and this is the stitch that you wanna concentrate. And I will show you the diagram in just a few moments but you gotta put it in trust in me right now. So the, here's the last one. So don't worry about this one that's out here. Here's the last one. I want you to put in four half double crochets into that same one. So one, two, three, and four. So that other one that was kind of standing out in the middle of nowhere, the other side, you remember we did five double, half double crochets? Well here is the fifth, it's right here. And so once you get these four in, just join it to the top of the other one there. And before you continue, what I want you to do is that I want you to go back to the very starting one. Okay, there was four, one, two, three, and four. Slip in your hook into that fourth one Okay, it was, the, it was the very starting one, so one, two, three, and four, and slip in a stitch marker there. So when you come back around, always on this round, you can count on this stitch marker being your indication of where you're gonna start putting your two in there, and then you're gonna carry on as you go all the way around. You don't need to do one right here, the stitch marker, because it becomes very obvious. Let me bring up the diagram, and let me show you where we are and what we're gonna be doing next. So here's the diagram of where we are right now. We just came and did the four, we just did the join. So we're going to move up and we're gonna chain two and then we're gonna put two 
half double crochets in the first one and then half double crochets all the way down the other other side. You're going to then get to the other side and once where you get to the stitch marker that I had you label you're gonna put two into that one and then one into each one of these all the way around. Okay so here's your five. There's gonna be two double crochets. Once you again then get back and you're gonna half double crochet yourself all the way right where you've placed the stitch marker is you're gonna start doing your twos right there and then come here. So you can kinda see the rhythm that's going on regardless of what side of the hot dog that you're working on just like this. So let's move along to round number two. So let's begin round number two. We're gonna chain up two and as I explained in the very first intro of this video is that the first two never counts as anything. It's more of a builder. So you're going to look and you see one, two, three, four, right? And this is a builder here. So here is your fifth. Do you see how it's all linked into the same? That's the one right here. And that's where you're gonna put two double, uh, half double crochets. Everything is a half double crochet in this one except for the very final revolution of the buns. So what we're going to do then is that we're gonna put two into that one and then we're just gonna carry on all the way down now to the other side until you get to the other stitch marker on the other side of the wiener in order to make it work. So just half double crochet to the next stitch marker and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the other side of the wiener and this is round number two. So this is where we're turning around before heading back toward this slip stitch to complete. So here's where the stitch marker is where I had you label. So right where the stitch marker is um, you have to place in two double crochets or sorry two half double crochets into that same one. So one and two. So that instead of me counting all the way back across I'm looking for these stitch markers. Now you wanna move that stitch marker up right now. Don't wait and I want you to stick in the uh, stitch marker right here. Okay so just right behind it and that's an indication of next time you get here that's where you're going to start and put two half double crochets once again. So what we have to do in the remaining of the four that are left is that each one of these are gonna have two half double crochets each. So as I'm talking to you and going around so what's gonna happen in the rows abo uh, above this is, is going to be that we're gonna place in half double crochets that stand by themselves to separate where these are going into in order to compensate for the bend. So you need a total of five of these. So you got one, two, three, four and here's your fifth right here. Okay. So what I would do if it were me that third stitch marker that I had you put aside I want you to place it right here. Okay. And what's going that's gonna indicate as you get bigger sometimes it's harder to count those five as you go around. So it gives you a nice visual clue on where you are when you're going all the way around. And it will make sense as we get around. So place your stitch marker in there. So now that you've gone all the way around uh, this particular bend you're gonna continue down the other side now and it is all just gonna be half double crochets until you get to the final stitch marker on the other side where we're gonna do the final bend before then attaching as we've done a whole revolution. So half double crochet down until you get to the next stitch marker. So I'm coming to the other side. Here's the stitch marker. So if you can see here, you see this is where we started. It looks a little misshaped. That's where we started. So and it's misshaped because this because we haven't finished all the way going around. So I'm just half double crocheting until I get to the stitch marker and it's the next one. So in that stitch marker just like we did on the other side we want to push in two half double crochets in there. And again just like we did before so that right here okay moves up that stitch marker right now. Therefore you'll have it in place next time you get around here. And now you will continue then putting in two double or half double crochets then for the remaining of this turn. There's a four of them in a row. So this is the third one and I'm going until I run out of stitches essentially. So I don't really need to count it. I can see it. So there you go. So I have my four in here and all I'm just gonna do then is that I'm going to join it to the top of where this chain two was. Okay so it's the first half double crochet just like that and that completes off that revolution. So it was misshaped and now I've come all the way around and now it looks perfect once again. Let's begin round number three. So let's begin round number three. So here we are. We just finished these. All these two were in a row. Now we're gonna chain up two half double into the first one and then the next one is gonna have two half double crochets into the same one and then we're gonna half double crochet ourselves all the way down until we get to the next stitch marker. 
the next stitch marker we'll put in two and then there will be one by itself put in two, one by itself and you continue to do that and right where I have placed that last stitch marker here as we came up all the way around remember I said it's just a help as a visual just gives you indica indication of where you're gonna finish and then you're just gonna half double crochet yourself back across and you get to the other side right where the stitch marker is you'll put in two then one, two, one, two, one, two, one and join. Let's begin round number three. So let's begin round number three. We're gonna chain up two, doesn't count as anything and we look at it. So these are the two that are into the same one. We saw that before. So the very starting one, okay, the first one of the two is gonna get one half double crochet by itself and then the next one is gonna get two half double crochets into the same one and then that concludes the, the turn of this particular side and now we're just gonna half double crochet ourselves all the way down until we get to the next stitch marker on the other side and we'll obviously we'll complete this side of the turn when we get back around. I'll see you on the other side with this stitch marker. So I'm coming up to the stitch marker that's on the other side. So because this is round number three right where the stitch marker is is where we're gonna put in two half double crochets and this is round three so then the next half double crochet is by itself. Okay, so then the next one has two and then the next one, oops sorry that's a half double crochet, the next one is by itself for a half double crochet and you notice I'm really not counting how many I should do. There should be a total of five of those sets by the way but I'm not really counting. I'm letting my stitch markers show me the way. Okay, so this is happens to be the third one. You know I kind of count in my brain anyway but here is the fourth that's going in. There's two into this one and the next one is one by itself and see this last stitch marker? That's the very last time you'll put in two. Do you get that? Isn't that neat? So if you can do that and keep with the pattern it makes a lot of sense. So right before I go on I want to move up my stitch marker so I want you to move up that stitch marker to right where you are you'll see that next time you come around and this other one here, do you remember that it was two? Just stick in your hook, see it's kind of in between them two. Stick in your hook there and grab that other stitch marker and pull it through there and then you'll see that next time too. You're gonna notice that these stitch markers kind of go off on an angle like so in order to stay balanced. So all you gotta do now at this point is just half double crochet yourself back to the other side and I'll see you at the first stitch marker there where we'll finish off the rotation for round number three. So I'm coming up all the way back around to where we started. See how it's kind of odd shaped here? That's because that's where we started and we came all the way back around. Right where that stitch marker is is where we're gonna start the fun for this time around. So there's the stitch marker. We're gonna place in two half double crochets there. I'm gonna move up the stitch marker now before I forget. So I'm just right where the last one is. Just pulled through the stitch marker so you know where it is next time. Are you loving that you don't really have to count too much? So the next one is gonna be one half double crochet by itself. The next one is two and then the next one is one. The next one is two. Okay, next one is one and next one is two and I wanna verify that. I'm just gonna verify because I got one more stitch left and so I got one, two, three, four. Here's the fourth and we have to finish it with one by itself. See, I've gone all the way around and let's just join it to the top of the beginning uh, half double crochet. So just right over here, just slip stitch it in and there you go. So I've now just gone all the way around once again. So let's move on to round number four. On to round number four. This is where we've just finished off. See how that we did all this double in a row and then one by itself and then joined. So the next one we're gonna chain up two. There will be two in a row by itself and then the two and then we're gonna go down the line, come down to the other side and then we're going to get in two right into where we have the first one marked with a stitch marker then two in a row, 
then two, and then two in a row, and two. So what I'm gonna do is that this particular chart doesn't take you all the way around of all the different stitches, but you can see the growth rate is all very consistent with each other. And so as I'm coming all the way around now, I'm going to be explaining it, explaining it more than showing this diagram. When we get all the way back around, then the other side, there will be two right where the stitch marker is, and then two by itself, two, and then two, 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 and then finish off with two singles, and then slip stitch it, and then move it even further. So let's uh, continue along with round number four. So let's begin round number four. We're gonna chain up two. Okay, and we look down, see how there's two in the same one here. There's one by itself. So that one by itself is gonna continue to be by itself. So let's add a double, half double crochet there. Okay, and we gotta add in another half double crochet into the next stitch. And the easiest way I can see, see how these two are in here? So this half is in the first one. So the last one that is the second one in is going to have two half double crochets. So there was two by itself and then two into the one. And now you're just gonna half double crochet yourself down the side of this. And I'll meet you on the other side for the stitch marker for round number four. So I'm coming on to the other side of the wiener. And right where the stitch marker is, is where we're gonna start playing and doing the fun turn once again. So the next one is the stitch marker. So this one will have two into this one. And in this uh, particular one, round number four, there's going to be two double crochets, or sorry, half double crochets by itself. What I want you to do, move up that stitch marker before you continue, then you know where it is next time. Okay, so as I said, there's two half double crochets in a row by itself for this revolution. And then there's two into the next. And then there's two into, uh, one into the next two. And then two into the next. Then two, in, uh, one into the next two. So I'm getting that little messed up in my brain. I know what to do, it's just saying it. <laughs> okay, two into the next. And the next two are by themselves. And look where that last stitch marker is. Mm -hmm, you got that right. So that last one is right where the last two into the same one is or are. Okay, so that's it. And let's continue all the way down the other side now with just a half double crochet in each until you get to the next stitch marker where we'll finish off round number four. So as you're coming up all the way to the other side, we're just rounding the corner where we had started. So right where the stitch marker is, you're going to place in two half double crochets. Move up that stitch marker right away so you don't forget to do that. And right, it's right in the last one here. And that'll help you greatly. This is round number four. So round number four then, the remaining of this turn is two will be by itself just like we were on the other side. And then the next one is two into the same one. Okay, and then the next one is two by itself. One and two. The next one is two into the same one. Two by itself. The next one is two into the same one. And then the final two stitches, see you're running out of stitches, you only got two left just one into each. And that's it. So that is round number four. Just join it to the top of where you started. Just like that. So that was round number four. So you can see it does a really great job. Let's move along to round number five. So round number five is the starting kind of the similar to how we've already been doing. The only difference is that there's more half double crochets in between where two exists. Let's chain up two. Remember it does not count as anything and we come into the first half double crochet and we do that one. And then we do two more half double crochets in a, in a row, not into the same one. So in a row, so one and two. So this time in this round, there's three half double crochets that sit by itself. See the next one? It's the second half of where two are into the same one. That means that we're on the right track and there's gonna be two into that one as well. So let's move down the side of this wiener and let's go to the other side and I'll see you at the first stitch marker. 
So I'm coming up to the other side of the wiener right where the stitch marker is. Again you are putting in two. You get that? So in the buns it's exactly the same thing that we're doing here. The only difference is the last two rounds of the buns are slightly different. So what we want to do is the next three are gonna be by itself. So one, two, and three. It's like a race uh, track really when you're running around a track. The, the more outside that you get of the radius the more stitches are needed. So the next one's gonna have two into the same one and then three by itself once again and I continue that same pattern until I get to the other stitch marker on the other side of this rotation to show me exactly where I need to stop doing that. I'm not one for counting stitches if I don't really have to and this is one of those tricks. So there's two into that one because I did three by itself and now another three by itself just like that. Two into the next one and then the next three are by itself. One, two, and three. Now it looks like I forgot to move out that stitch marker last time but I can see that it is right where I should be anyway. So I'm gonna put two into that one and I'm not gonna forget this time. So again, don't forget your stitch markers. It makes a, a difference. It might have fallen out too. I doubt it though. I think it's probably more me than anybody. So I can't blame anybody but myself. Okay, so then I'm just going to half double crochet them myself all the way down to the other side and then we'll finish off this revolution which is round number five and there is only two more rounds after this. So you can see it doesn't take long really to do these wieners and make sure that you do two of them. I'll see you on the other side. So I'm coming up to the conclusion of round number five and I'm getting my stitch marker which is next. So here it is and that's gonna get two this time. Well it did every time. Every time we hit the stitch marker it's the starting point and I'm just gonna move up my stitch marker now before I forget. So remember in, in round number five then there's three that sit alone by itself. So one, two and three and then two into the next one. One and two. Okay and then three again. So one, two and three. Okay two into the next one. Okay and then three by itself. Okay and then two into the next one and this is the final time you'll do it because there's only three stitches left. One, two and three and you know what I really didn't count it. It's just this pattern is so easy that you can count on yourself being accurate as long as you use stitch markers. So then now that that's done just join it to the beginning one right over here. Remember that chain two does not count as anything so just right at the very top and bring that to a slip stitch and that concludes off round number five. There you go. So just got a couple more rounds to go and then your wiener's done. So let's move on to round number six. Round number six there's going to be four half double crochets in a row before we hit and then put two right in the very beginning. So let's chain up two. Remember it doesn't count as anything. Moving to the first one so there's going to be four halves in a row. Four half double crochets. Sometimes I use abbreviations when I'm doing these tutorials and sometimes people don't get that I'm actually using them. <laughs> Okay so we got this two and three and four. Just like that. So therefore you're here. See how the two are in the same one? So the next one which is the second one of the two will have two half double crochets in there. So now you're just gonna move down your wiener to the other side and I'll see you over there at the stitch marker and I'll show you how to go around for number six. So we're now coming up to the other side of the wiener for round number six and when I hit that stitch marker I'm going to do uh, my rotation around. So by this point in the tutorial you should have understood by now that you're repeating this to go around the whole circle and what I'm about to show you is going to be the same. So I'm just gonna show it to you once because I think that you're grasping. So right when you're on the stitch marker you're gonna apply two and for this one going around then there's gonna be four 
half double crochets in a row before you put in two once again. So this is two, three, and four. And then in the next one, you're going to put two again. Okay, so continue that all the way around. You have your other marking of where the last two will go into and then you'll continue again half double crochet all the way to the other side where I'll meet you over here. So do this round, coming around, go all the way and I'll see you at the end of this round where I'll show you how to finish it off. And also make sure, just one second, make sure that you do move up that stitch marker because you have one more round to go after this. Don't forget that. So I'm coming to the other side. This is where we started on the other side and went around and now I'm back at the stitch marker where I'm gonna finish up this rotation. Now my wiener has gotten a lot bigger. I just gotta get one more revolution in and then it's nice and fat and juicy uh, ready for using. So what we have here is this is the stitch marker. So we're gonna place two into this one and on this revolution number six there was four half double crochets in a row. So one, two, three and four. Once you get your four done, the next one is another two. So one and two into the same one and then another four by itself. So one, two, three and four just like that. And now let's just turn my wiener a little bit. So the next one, uh, one, two, three, so the next one has two into there, this one. So one and two and then four by itself. So one, two, three and four. Now we're almost done my wiener. So the next one we have two into the same one and then the last four are one half double crochet by itself. So one, two, three and the last one to conclude round number six just like this and just join it to the top of the first stitch. So we got one more revolution round number seven to conclude the wiener and therefore you can see it's going really quite perfectly on both sides just like you see here. So let's do number seven and get this wiener done. Remember that you need to do two wieners in order to make this snuggle sack. So let's begin round number seven. Chain two, remember it doesn't count as anything. So the next five are gonna be by itself and then the, the next one after that is gonna be two into here. So you see here's where the two is, right where my thumb is. The second one right where the thumb is is where the two is gonna be in two. So let's put five uh, half double crochets in a row. So we got one, two, three, four and five and I'm on now the second one see that and that is the one that's going to have two. So I want you to half double crochet yourself down the side of the wiener and I'll see you back on the other side where we'll do the rotation around and then meet back up here and we'll get this done to, conclu to conclude today's wiener. So I'm coming on the other side of the wiener as I'm gonna go all the way around this section right here. Do you see? And so I'm at the stitch marker in just a couple stitches and that one's gonna get two of course if you've been following my drift all along. So here's where we are. You do not need to move up the stitch marker. This is the last rotation. This is the, how big your wiener is gonna get. So in this one here you got two in the same and then there's gonna be five half double crochets by itself and then two again. So I want you to do that all the way around as you turn this corner and then remember that the last stitch marker that I'm having you move up is where the last two are in and then you're gonna have to double crochet yourself back to the beginning where I'll meet you back there and I'll show you how to finish off this revolution and then this wiener is done. Remember that you still have to do two of these all together in order to come up with a complete set. So I'll leave that with you. I'll see you back at the end of this rotation. So I'm coming to the conclusion. This is where we started on this rotation. This is round number seven. This is the final as we go. So here's the stitch marker to indicate this is where I'm gonna start. We're gonna place in two and then this time just like we did on the other side is gonna be five half double crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four and five. And please repeat that same idea. So two into the next, then five to the next and do it right to the very end and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming to the conclusion. I'm just joining it to the top. 
and that's it. So the wiener is now done. So what I wanna do is that I wanna trim about 12 inches long a strand of string. I'm gonna pull it through the loop and because the child will be using this and because this is an outside edge of a project the chances of weaving this in and out is very strong for it to fall out just as the way it is. So what you wanna do is you wanna take this strand and you wanna run it through with the darning needle underneath some of the stitch work and just bury it underneath and you wanna go back and forth underneath the stitches about three times. Just take your time at doing this. So this is one. Going back in the other direction through a different path but in the other direction. So this is two. And going finally back in the other direction for number three. So when you go back and forth three times like this it will never fall out because your project cannot stretch in three different directions at one time. So that's how you would go to finish this off uh, uh, with both wieners plus the hot dog when you're ready to do so. So that's it. You can now pull out your stitch markers. You just have to do now uh, the second wiener in order to continue. So I'd recommend you know you might as well do both wieners at the same time. Um, get them both done and then you're ready on for the buns which will, be, which will be the next part of today's tutorial. So now I have this. Now I've already done one wiener off camera. So now I've already got two done and I'm gonna be ready for the assembly once I get the buns complete. And I'll see you in the next chapter. Good job on your wieners. Now it's time to move on and make those buns. There are four buns and the wiener is positioned in between the buns. They are sewn directly onto the wieners and partially over top to give the illusion that they look like the wiener is tucked in between the buns. So let's crochet. So we're now back and we're going to do the buns next. Remember what I talked about in the intro that there's actually four buns here. So there's one on this side, one on the opposite, one on this side and one on the opposite side of that. So in actual fact what you have here is that you have two sets of panels like this. And then eventually as we get closer you'll notice that the wiener is hanging out one side more than the other. Okay do you see that? And they will just be attached so that they're opposite. So you have two sides that look identical to each other. So let's talk about the buns a little more detail because there's something slightly different versus the wiener. So here's the front and back. Depends on you what you consider front and back. You know I like ketchup. I don't really like mustard so that would be my front for sure. And of course you can decorate your hot dogs any way that you wish at the end. Now you're going to notice here that we've just finished the wiener. The wiener was strictly just straight down and back around the corner like so. Now the bun is pretty much almost the same and it goes for up to round number six and then what's gonna happen then in round number seven and eight is that we're gonna stop and we're gonna go and we're just gonna do a portion like this and then the other one is just gonna be portion growing back out again and stopping. So what you're looking at here, do you notice that the center line here is right here? This side is more bigger than this side. That's the side that you're growing on to give the shape of the bun. So this side here, if you just kind of use your eyes and just follow it around, you'll see that there's a shaping going on within the buns. You can see it on the opposite side as well. So when you're going to sew this then together with the rest of it, you gotta make sure that the side that has the growth is on the outside of the hot dog in order to keep it uniform just like this. So at the very end what we're going to do then is that once the buns are complete, we're going to sew the bun like this. So it overlaps the wiener just like you see here and you're gonna do on both sides. Then you have one complete panel. You're gonna do the same with the other side. Have one complete panel. But what I would do if I were you, do one first. It becomes your prototype for the next and then just lay your panels over top of the other one. Making sure it's all lining up and then just sew what you see here. So, that so in this part of the tutorial what I'm gonna do for you is that the wiener and the buns are very similar to each other. So up until round six is identical to each other. So it's the last two sections of last two rows that's gonna change the story. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna just quickly talk about it but I'm not gonna be as detailed of stopping and starting in between each one of the revolutions like I did with the wiener because I really think that you got it by now and uh, we're gonna cover that next. So bringing back my charts just like so. What we have is we have the starting side and we're gonna start exactly where we did before in the wiener and we're, and we're gonna start up here and then we're gonna do one increase before we then go all the way down to the other side till we hit the round the boat and then come back around and then back up. So what's gonna happen here is the buns have two in, in the maximum um, uh, circle or the, uh, the rotation there's gonna be two into the same and then four 
okay and the wiener had two into the same and then five. So you can see that the buns are slightly smaller other than the two sections that we have to do right at the very end. So what I'm gonna do for you is that we're gonna get you started with the stitch markers. Again exactly what we did with stitch markers within the wiener. It's the exact same thing and I don't think I need to stop and start as often um, with you. I'll tell you how to get started because really if I tell you for example in this round here that there's one that stands by itself and then there's two uh, double crochets in the, in the next. Look here. See two in the next one by itself, two in the next one by itself. So how I get started is how you're gonna do the other side and then come back around. You'll find the other stitch marker and do the other same. So two into one, one into one, two, one, two, one and etc. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense for you and let's get started and let's grab your sand color which is the color of the buns. So let's get started. You're going to need three stitch markers like we did with the wiener and you'll need those. So put those aside so that they're nice and handy for you. The buns are not as, as long or nor are they as thick. You'll, this will go a lot faster than the wiener. So let's uh, begin with the slip knot and for the buns it's chaining of 70. So remember that slip knot never counts as one. So we we'll just go one, two, three, four, five. Go all the way to 70 for me. And I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay, just like the wiener, we want to, we have our 70 done for the bun size and we're gonna count back to the third one. So one, two, and three, turn it over, get the back loop only and then half double crochet in that one. So what I want you to do is that I want you to half double crochet yourself all the way to the other side of this chain and on the very last one I'll meet you there and we'll do something different in order to go around in a circle like we did with the wiener. So half double crochet yourself all the way to the last stitch and just hold our uh, last one on the chain and just hold there and wait for me. So I'm coming up close to the end. I just got one more to do after this one and that is the final one which is next right there. So here's the final. So the very final one that we want to do is that we want to put in five half double crochets into that same one and we're going to rotate the project naturally as it goes. So one and two, three, four and five. Just like that. So without further ado I want you to go back to the very first one okay and that's where I want you to stick your crochet hook and that'll be the very first stitch marker that you put in that'll give you the indication of when you need to um, do that when you're activating it all the way around. So do you see where it is? That's where you need to put it next time. So you just keep moving up from there. So now we're all we're just going to do is turn this over and go along the chain on the underside. Make sure that you put the string down on top so that it gets tucked into position and all you're just going to do now is half double crochet. You're working on the opposite side of the chain naturally and you're going to go to the very last chain here on the other side and then I'll show you what to do there because you've got to rotate around that one too if you remember from the wiener. So I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way to the other side and I'm going into my very last one. So it's like on the wiener. Okay you have one last stitch. You got this one that's appearing out. This is the fifth one of the turn as we're going around. So you're gonna go into the last one just like this and you're gonna do it for one and you're gonna do it for two. You're gonna do it for three and four. So with that other one that's holding out like this that is your fifth. So what I want you to do is that I want you to slip stitch it to the top of that very first one and that concludes that one that round. Before you continue though the four that you had I want you to go in just after the first one and I want you to place your stitch marker there to give you the indication next time that you come there that that's where you're gonna start the rotation when you come back all the way across your, your bun just like this. Okay let's move up to round number two. Let's begin round number two. We're gonna chain up two. Doesn't count as anything and in the very first one right here okay there's gonna be two half doubles into the same one. So for this one when we hit the, the corners there's just gonna be two into each as you're building out outward. So then once you get your two into that one it's just one half double crochet until you hit the other stitch marker on the other side of the turn and I'll see you there in just a moment. I'm coming up to the very end of the other side as we turn the corner. So on round number two just like we did with the wiener. So on this side we're going to then put in two half double crochets in each and the stitch marker is indicating the very first one. So here's one and two and you keep doing that so that you got five in a row like that. So that's one out of two. So do it again. So one and two. That's number two. The next one is 
number three. And the next one is number four. So two into that one as well. So as we turn the corner. And then the very final one here, there's two into this one. So what I want you to do at this point is that I want you to put your last stitch marker in right here. So that's your very third one and that'll indicate where you're coming all the way around. So now I want you to continue and make your way back to the very beginning of this revolution and simply just put in one half double crochet into each and I'll see you on the other stitch marker as we bring this uh, round to conclusion. Before I move on I wanna make sure that you move up your stitch marker and the very first one remember here's where the two is it's right in between the two that is where you need to move it up. Don't forget to move that up or you'll, you'll mess up as you go. So please make sure you do that and then continue along. I knew I forgot something I just didn't know what. <laughs> so let me continue. So I'm now on the other side here's the stitch marker and on this side here this is where we're gonna start. We're gonna put two into this one and two into each one of them as we hit back toward the starting point right over here. There should be a total of four of those in a row. So this is the second one of, of four. This is the third one of four. So there's two in this one as well. And then the final one is the next one and this one has two. So you're just going to join it then to the beginning, the top of the beginning and that concludes off round number two. Make sure you go right into a chain and not a gap space because you will have it, it'll, it'll look open if you don't do that. So that's how you do that. So that is round number two. Again come back to the very starting over here and move up your, your stitch marker so that you know where to find it next time. Okay, so let's continue with round number three. So round number three we're going to chain two and then the first one is going to be one double crochet by itself. Oops, I went right into a gap. Go right into the top of a, a stitch. So go right in top of a stitch just like this and then the next one if you look at it see how there's two into the same one. The second one here that is going to have two into that one this time. So there's one by itself and then two into the next. So we're gonna come all, all the way down now one half double crochet until you get to the next stitch marker and then in the next stitch marker you're gonna put in two and then one, two and then one, two and then one. I'll see you there in just a moment. As you make your way across your bun on the other side you'll have the stitch marker and in that one you'll place in your two half double crochets as normal. Okay and make sure you move up that stitch marker so that you don't forget to do that so you can identify it next time. So then for this one as you're turning around uh, the end here the next one will be one by itself. Okay the next one will have two and you keep doing that until you get to that other stitch marker that you developed. Okay so then the next one's one by itself. There's a total of five of these groups by the way just so if you're counting out loud. So the next one is two. Next one is one. Next one is two. And one. So here is the other stitch marker. So that one is the last one of the group of five. So I just wanna verify. So one, two, three, four. I was counting the groups of two. This is the final group of two for number five. Just like this. So one, and two and I wanna move up my stitch marker so I can identify that again next time. Okay so when you're coming all the way around on future ones all the difference is, is that there's gonna be more single crochet or sorry more half double crochet standing by itself versus the ones that are two into the same. Half double crochet yourself now back to the other stitch marker which then is the conclusion of this round which is number three. So I'm coming up to the conclusion of round number three. And so here's the stitch marker. So there's gonna be a two into this one. So as we make our way back to the very start right here there's going to be a consistent pattern. So the next one is gonna be one by itself and then the next one will be two. Please do that same idea going all the way back to the start just like this and there will be four groups of those. So there's one and two so far. Actually I might as well just finish that off with you. So there, here's the one by itself. The next one has got two. My goal is is that I can just tell you what to do next time and show you exactly what to do as we go. So the one by itself. So here is the conclusion. 
this is one, uh, two into the same one and then finally the last stitch is one by itself. So once you get that done just join it to the top of the beginning and that will conclude off round number three. So we're at the halfway point and ready to move on to round number four. So one, two, builder. So okay, so this time what we're going to have here is that we're gonna have two half double crochets in a row. So make sure you go right into a stitch and not a gapping space. So we got one and two and just like it was with the wiener. See the next one, see it's got the group of two right underneath. This is the next one which is the second one and there's gonna be two into that one. So what I want you to do is half double crochet yourself down the side of the uh, bun and I'll see you at the first stitch marker. So in round number four I'm coming up to the other side where we're gonna zip around the corner and here is my stitch marker. So in this round number four is that there's gonna be two into where that stitch marker is and I'm gonna move up that stitch marker before I forget. Just like so. And then what I want to do then is that the next one will be by itself. Okay, and then the next one is going to be by itself. Okay, so that's the repeat pattern for this time around. So last time it was just one by itself, this time it's two. So I want you to do that same pattern and going all the way around until you get to that stitch marker on this side here. Once you get to this stitch marker that's the last time you'll put two in there and then you'll zip along the other side with half double crochets back to the very beginning. Please do that same patterning going all the way around. I'll see you at the, the end of this revolution. So I'm coming back around to where it started on round number four and right where the stitch marker is right here is going to be two. I'm gonna move up that stitch marker before I forget so I can capture it on round number five. Okay. And so then this one here is a repeat pattern. So the next two are by themselves. So one and two. And then the next one is two into the same one. And continue that same pattern going all the way right to the start. It's just it's a couple more times after this. So two into the next, or one into the next two, two, one into the next two, and so on. And then join to the very top, just like this. So I'm just finishing up. It's the last two are by themselves and then just join it to the top of the beginning. That was round number four. So let's begin round number five. I can start right away because I completely understand this pattern. So we're gonna chain up two. Remember it doesn't count as anything. So last time we had two standing by themselves. This time it's gonna be three. So that means that the next three are by themselves. So let's begin. So the first three are one half double crochet each. I'm trying to avoid going into a space I wanna get right into that first element here. It makes the world a difference in the visuals. So that was one, one, and then two, and three. So three by themselves. Here you have two, just like there. So this is the second one of the two, which is the next one. There'll be two into that one. So I want you to half double crochet yourself now down the side of the bun to the next stitch marker and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming around to the other side of the bun as we're gonna whip all the way around and this time when we get to the stitch marker there's going to be two into that first one and then there's going to be three that stand alone. Okay, so that's the two into the first one. Let's move up that stitch marker. We only have one more revolution to do after this. So that makes it quite nice and easy. So this one is smaller than the wiener so it goes quicker. And what I want you to do is that I want you to put in three half doubles by itself and continue that same pattern going all the way around until you get to the other stitch marker. The other stitch marker indicates the last time you will do the half double crochet two into the same one and then you'll whip across and do the half doubles all the way back to the beginning. So remember it's two into the one and then three, two into one and then three. Do that all the way around for this turn and I'll see you back at the beginning of this revolution. So I'm coming up to the conclusion of round number five and I've started over here so I'm coming around. So right where the next stitch marker is is where I'm gonna start putting my two in. So there'll be two into this one. I'll move up my stitch marker in just a moment. So this time we're gonna do three by itself. So one, two, and three. And then the next one has two again. And continue to repeat that same pattern going all the way until you hit 
this here and it should be on the end of the three as well as when you go to join it. Okay, so see you back there in just a moment and I'm gonna move up my stitch marker before I forget and we have one more revolution to do which is round number six after this. So I'm concluding round number five and the last three are just one half double crochet each. And then we're just going to join it to the top of the first one and we're gonna move up to round number six. So round number six really quite straightforward. So the last time there was three by itself, this time there will be four. So one, two, doesn't count as anything. So I'm looking towards where the two are in here, right where my thumb is, okay. So the first four are all going to be one half double crochet by itself. So one, two, three, and four, just like this. And then the next one is the second one of the two and there will be two into that one. So now just half double crochet just one into each until you get to the next stitch marker on the other side of your bun. So I'm coming up to the other side of the bun where we have to whip around the corner. So then the first one with the stitch marker will have two half double crochets in it just like this. And now this time there's going to be four half double crochets in a row by itself. So one, two, three and four and then two into the next one. So continue that same idea. Remember the, the last stitch marker here is the last time you'll put two in there and then you'll whip along with half double crochet right back to the start of this rotation. So once you get this rotation done I'll see you on the other side. We'll, um, we'll touch base and I'll show you what to do next. So I'm coming up to the conclusion of round number six and I'm hitting the stitch marker and that means that I've got to turn around and go back to where I've started right here. So this one here where the stitch marker is, don't forget to, um, this is the last time you have to use this stitch marker so you don't need to move it up at this point. And what I need you to do is that you got two into that one and then the next four are by themselves. And I want you to continue that same idea going all the way back to the start. So there's, this is the third one and the fourth and the next one will be two once again and continue that. So once you get your two and do another four by itself and so on and then just slip stitch it to the top of the beginning one over here. And then we're gonna start then and create and go in a different direction for two more steps in order to complete today's bun. Okay so the final four are by itself. One, two, three, and four and that concludes the revolutions for doing the hot dog. Okay, so just join it, but you're not done yet. You got two more things you need to do, so do not fasten off at this point. So this is what it will look like here, and now I'm gonna take you to the paper and I'm gonna show you what's gonna go on next. So you've completed rounds one through six at this point, and now it's time for the next two steps that we need to do. You will notice here that this seems to take a really weird turn, and right here, right in the end on this side and on this side there's more to it. Let me show you another one. I've actually got all the buns complete off camera. The ones that we're going to do here. So what you can see here is that do you see what's going on right here? Yep. So what's going to happen? We're going to pick up and we're going to go all the way across. When we get to the other side we're going to stop, turn our work and come all the way back here. Okay. So what's going to happen when you really look at it from this point of view this section right here is done and is not done on the other side. So therefore it gives you the shape of the bun. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense to you and I'm gonna show you some easy ways to count that in order to get this shape and then basically once you put things together and you sew the bun to the wiener when on both sides when you go to do that you gotta make sure that the growth side is on the outside of the bun in order to keep its shape so it's accurate. So what's gonna happen in here, we're gonna chain one and we're gonna put one single crochet into the very first one and then nine as per the pattern. But I want you to look at it this way. We're gonna do 10 single crochets in a row, then 10 half double crochets in a row, 43 double crochets in a row, 10 half double crochets in a row, and then 10. Once you get to the other side, you're going to slip stitch over to the next one and then begin to do 10 single crochets again, 10 half double crochets, 43 double crochets back and then 10 to half double crochets back and one single crochet or 10 single crochets back when you get there. So you're gonna go down like this and then back like that. So you gotta make sure you turn I guess at the bottom so that you remember to do that. So if you remember 10, 10, 43, 10, 10 it makes it a lot easier. Let me show you what to do. 
So let's begin the first section of two sections that we need to do. We need to chain up one first and right in the very first one right here you're going to put in one single crochet. So it, it, that's what it says as per the pattern and then it says to do the other nine but I want you to count it in ten so that's considered one of ten. So let's do and count ten out. So this is number two. These are single crochets for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So there's your first ten single crochets. So you see it, see how it's kind of extending it out already? The next ten are half double crochets. So you're gonna do ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So there is your ten half double crochets. So we've done ten, ten. Now we're gonna do forty-three double crochets in a row. You unfortunately have to count that. So I'm gonna count and if you wanna speed me up you can and if you just wanna go with me you can. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, this is twenty two. Twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. Thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine. Forty, forty one, forty two, and forty three. So there's your forty three. This is where you are compared to the end. So the next ten are going to be ten half double crochets. So let's continue. Let's get this done. So one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And now the remaining is going to be ten single crochets in a row. So let's do those. So one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, 
9, and 10. Once you get your 10, just slip stitch to the very next one, just slip it, and you're ready. And that concludes that section there. We're gonna turn our work, so just turn it upside down, and we're gonna go back in the other direction, and we're gonna complete and go in the other direction. Let me show you some tips. So now that we've already turned our work, we're going to simply just start in the next one. So we've slipped into this one, so we're gonna go right to the next one. We're not gonna chain one first, and we're just going to do 10 single crochets, 10 half double crochets, 43 double crochets, 10 half double crochets, and 10 singles. So you can kinda look and see where it builds and where it changes. So here is half doubles, I see it changes right here. You have to match. So if you can identify these stitches, you don't even have to count anything because you can see it. Do you see that? And so if you get to the other side, you'll see that it's gonna drop off as soon as the double crochet stops. So here's the last double crochet, I can see that. Okay, half doubles, and then I can see that it changes the singles. If you can identify that, you don't have to count. And if you are wanting to make sure you count, then count, it's up to you. So, so remember, it's 10 singles, 10 halves, 43 doubles, 10 halves, and 10 singles to get you to the other side. So please do that now, and I'll see you there in just a moment. So once you get to the last stitch like so, you are going to now fasten off and then use your darning needle like I showed with the wiener in order to finish this off. So you have to do a total of four of these buns. So this is one of four. So you have to do three more of these and then we're going to start the main assembly next because I've already done my homework off camera and I'm ready to go. So I'll see you back here and it's just like the wiener. Make sure that you glide your hook in place for three, up to three times. So once across, so one, and then coming back in the other direction for two, and the other direction for three, just like that. So I want you now and to get this done and it's ready for final assembly time and then we can do the, the adding of the toppings as well. That's just chain work, very, very easy as well. So it's completely up to you and how you wanna do that and I'll see you back here for the assembly next. Of course, no hot dog is complete without decorating it and we have some ketchup and mustard that are options and there's just simple chain work in order to make it work. In this portion, I will show you what the designer suggests to do and I'll add my own creativity to make the toppings look more realistic with dripping ketchup and mustard. So let's decorate our hot dogs. It's now time for decorating your hot dog. So there's ketchup and mustard, both are the same. All it is really is just a chaining of 140 in order to make it work. So just create a slip knot and go. And just chain 140. And then once you get your chain done, that's it. That's all you gotta do. And you can sew on your mustard afterward. So for the ketchup and mustard, all it wants you to do is to chain 140 and then sew this chain down. Let me give you some ideas here. This is where I think you're gonna have a lot of fun. This is almost like a free forming, so there's no pattern for what I'm about to show you. I'm just gonna show you. So what I did, instead of chaining 140, I chained enough so that it can go in a straight line across the wiener from the, the bottom to the top. And it just stops just before you get to both sides of it. So uh, like it doesn't go over top of the wiener, like on the other side. So what I'm gonna do is that when I put on mustard on things, I, I'm never usually very neat about it. You won't ever find a perfect, you know, squirt like this. I get globs. And so for myself, I, I, I wanna be a little bit realistic with my own eating habits. And what I want to do is that second chain from the hook, I'm going to single crochet myself down this chain. And watch what happens when you do this. But I'm gonna show you even more techniques in, in just a moment. But look what happens when you single crochet. Now you bought the yarn anyway. So you might as well use more yarn because you have it in your hands. And look what you can do. You can take that little squirt of yarn that it suggested and thicken up the squirt so it's even more. But because I'm a sloppy kind of hot dog eater, <laughs> we won't get into that too much here in today's tutorial, but I glob it. And so I'm gonna show you some freeform techniques that I'm gonna do with my wiener that you could do with yours. And let me just single crochet myself all the way down the chain and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do next. So I'm all the way down. So now that I just converted the little squirt into a bigger squirt and again you can do that with the 140 if you wanted to and just kind of sew it into position, kind of doing all this kind of fun stuff and etc. But I'm gonna go even a little further. I'm gonna turn my work because you bought the yarn anyway so I might as well use it. So let's go. So what I like to do is that when I put on my 
toppings. I'm kind of messy about it. So I'm gonna chain up one and I'm gonna go across and I'm just gonna randomly do this. So I'm just gonna single crochet again just randomly across and then all of a sudden oh, oh I just have a little glob. So I'm gonna skip two and again this is all suggestion. So I'm gonna do uh, seven double crochets into the next. This is going to create what appears to be a blob of extra that I accidentally squirted on. Now you're thinking to yourself okay that's kind of crazy. So there's four. So I'm, I'm doing a total of seven. So that's five, six, and seven. And then I'm gonna skip two again. So skip one, two, go to the third and single crochet in again. So now what I've just done is that I've created like a blob kind of idea. So when I go to put it on here I'm gonna have a blob that kind of is leaking over here. So I'm gonna go all the way down just randomly putting in blobs as I go. You can do single crochets. Um, you can do half double crochets so if this blob wasn't as big. So I'm gonna go to the second over and I'm gonna put in half double crochets and I'm only gonna put six. Again there's no rhyme or reason just do it. Right? It's, it's like free forming. I love free forming. It's one of my favorite things of crochet. And uh, if life was ever perfect then you know it'd be boring. So one, two, three, four, five and six as I said. Skip one and then single crochet in the next. So this blob is not as big as the last blob. Do you see that? So then I'm gonna single crochet in some more and next time I'm going to put in some trebles. That's right. So I'm gonna live dangerously. So I'm going to skip over. So one, two, three. I'm gonna go to the fourth and so trebles you wrap twice. So one, two, three, four and I'm going to put in seven. Seven seems to be a magic number but in this case I could put nine. If you don't put enough then it doesn't get the radius to go properly around. So what I'm just doing here is I'm improvising on the hot dog giving it more of a realistic look on how you may decorate it yourself. And again we all have our own ha habits. Some people really like a neat hot dog and me I just smother it on and <laughs> throw it down my throat. So this is kind of like an idea. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me finish this one and then I'll leave the rest of it for you to improvise. And when I get to the other side all I'm just gonna do is just kind of work my way down the other side of this chain and kind of blob it on the other side but not equally. Um, not in the equal spots. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one more, nine. So that was even a bigger blob just like so. So I'm gonna skip to the fourth. So just one, two, three and four and just start single crocheting back again. So this blob is even bigger than the other two blobs. See that? So when you go to lay it down like this and then you blob the other side you're going to have like a layer of mustard that is all blobbed out all over the place and again it, the secret is is to randomize it and if you do so you can have a really cool idea. So try that see if it works for you and then when we come back we're gonna start the main assembly of this project. So here's what my glob looks like. Again free form crochet so I just put some stuff in here. I went down the opposite side so I kind of did things so it looks like I was kind of drooling it as I went. You know of course nothing in life is ever perfect. So what you wanna do with these uh, particular toppings is that you want to put your bun and your, your wieners together. So just do one panel and then what you can just do then is just sew this down in top. So in this case I could actually really kind of make it all kind of squirty and and really kind of fun and do it like like it shows in the photo even with my particular version I might actually do that. Get that sewn and then what you want to do is then match the other side. So I'm gonna talk about the assembly process because that's kind of the fun part of the whole thing. Finally you're ready to position your wieners and buns together. Now look at the photograph and match what you see. Notice the wiener extends out further on the top than it does on the bottom leaving the bottom edge more flat. Attach those buns and wieners together first then apply your toppings. You will then have two different panels and you will use a whip stitch around the outside leaving a hole at the top of the hot dog for the child to slip into the snuggle sack. So now it's time to do the final assembly. Let me talk about some of the elements to do in this and actually the uh, final assembly is not as hard as it, it looks and it's actually quite easy. So let's begin. So if you remember we are actually doing two sets of panels. So we're doing one panel on one and then we're doing a second. So in actual fact you have two wieners and four buns. 
just like so. And so what our goal is, is then to put them together. Now behind me, I've already put things together in here and I'm going to show you how I assembled it as far as like putting it as a whip stitch uh, together. So you'll see that there's a little bit of a gap here but you see that I fastened on the hot dog uh, bun to the wiener. And so for the sewing element, we're gonna come up and you're going to concentrate on the bun. So use the same bun color in order to sew it. So you can actually, you can't see it here but this is an actual one. I can just happen to see it there because I'm trained professional so don't question me on these things. <laughs> so I sewed it here and so if you flip it over you can see where I've done all the attaching and then of course you can see it on the other side. So this is the inside of, of where the child will be on the inside. So you can see that there's a bit of an overlap right here. So I made sure that when I went through, I went through the wiener completely. I didn't just go through a top layer so that it's nice and secure but here it's nice and tight. So even on the other side, nice and tight. You wanna make sure that when you're jumping over, you can jump over like two or three stitches but don't jump in any more than that because then you'll end up with uh, children that can put their fingers through holes. So you wanna be able to come down like this. So, so it's just a matter of just working your way in and out of the stitches. So when you cut the strands to do this, cut it long enough that you can use one strand to go the entire length of your bun in order to do so. Therefore you won't have any cut pieces of, of yarn in between and go right up to the top. Let's look at what's going on at the top. So as I come up to the top, what I wanted to do is that I put down the one wiener first and then I just I did a, a hatching, not actually sewing so that I could match it and then I went directly across and started the other one so they're both at the same thing. So on the very top the wiener hangs out more than the buns and that's uh, completely intentional. So what you want to do when you go down your wiener, you want to make sure that the buns are kind of matching. See how this line kind of matches? Do you see that? and it happens on the other side too. So use the lines that are in your crochet in order to match it up when you're going to do all the sewing. So now I'm gonna speed you up and I'm gonna show you how to do this and this is actually a lot of fun and good luck and we'll see you again real soon. So that's it for today. My friends at Yarnspirations.com and myself, Mikey of the Crochet Crowd, we would love to thank you so much sincerely for joining us with our hot dogging snuggle sack today. It's been a pleasure to teach you and of course if you're looking for more free patterns and tutorial ideas, you can count on us to keep the inspiration free and the ideas flowing. Have an amazing day. Hope to see you back here again real soon. See ya. Bye bye.